Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice functional equation. Uh, pretty much all functional equations nice. Well, not all of them, but at least the ones that I did. Uh, anyways, this is a nice equation. Hopefully you like it too. We have f of x plus the square root of 1 plus x squared all over x equals x. And we're going to find an expression for f of x. Okay? So, in other words, we're going to invert the function inside the parentheses. How do we do that? Because we have x on the right hand side, so that's as simple as it can get. So we're going to use, I'll be presenting two methods. I'm thinking about two methods. I'm not exactly sure about how the second method is going to turn out. We'll see, kind of see what it looks like. But anyways, the first method involves substitution. The second method also involves substitution, by the way, but anyways. I'm going to go ahead and call this expression inside the parentheses something. Because that's definitely going to simplify things, right? So let's go ahead and set it equal to t. So this gives me f of t equals x. Obviously, this is an oversimplification. t and x are related, but i got to find out how. I do know I do have t in terms of x. Now i got to find x in terms of t so that I can write it on the right-hand side. Make sense? So I'm going to try to solve for x from this mess. Let's go ahead and see how we can do it. So I have x plus the square root of 1 plus x squared divided by x equals t. Let's go ahead and cross multiply. The first step is cross multiplication. Multiply these two. x plus the square root of 1 plus x squared equals xt. And then you can square both sides, but I want to isolate the radical first. That's an important step because you don't want to introduce more radicals and you can actually get rid of this radical by isolating it on the left hand side by subtracting x from both sides. And now is a good time to square both sides. Let's do it. And while squaring, I think I'm going to take an extra step here and write this as x times t minus 1 and then square it that way, which is going to be nicer. and this is just going to be 1 plus x squared. That's the nice thing about factoring radicals, I mean squaring radicals, is that we get rid of the radical. Okay? Now, the right-hand side is a product, so if you are squaring a product, it's going to be x squared times t minus 1 squared. And then if you expand it, you're going to get x squared times t squared minus 2t, or not 2t, or tutor. And from here, if we distribute x squared, we're going to get a simpler expression from here, right? Because something is going to cancel out. Do you see? x squared t squared minus x squared times 2t. I could also write it as 2t x squared. That's probably better. Just multiply them backwards. 2t x squared plus x squared. And yes, x squared cancels out. Okay. Great. And then I get something like this. Now, all the variables are on the right-hand side. Let's put that on the left-hand side and set it equal to 1. Switch sides because it's better if every, everything is on the left-hand side. Well, at least some, for some people, right? So what am I going to do with this? Remember, our goal is to solve for x, not for t, obviously. If you try to solve for t, that's going to bring you back here. And there's no point. We already have it. So we're going to solve for x. And I do see that x squared happens to be a common factor, right? Do you see it too? So let's take out x squared. t squared minus 2t equals 1. And division gives us the following. Great. Well, not so great because I do need x, but come on, that's easy. You can just square root both sides. But it's going to bring us two solutions. They're going to be very similar. So I'm just going to do the positive one because I'm overall a positive person most of the time. And then I'm just going to square root this. And that'll be my positive solution, right? Well, if you put a minus sign in front of the one, then you get the other solution. So let's stick with this right now. Well, what does this give me? Well, I got x in terms of t. Let's go back to what we had. 
we had f of t equals x because remember the whole thing was replaced with t and I have x on the right hand side. So f of t is equal to x. Let's write it. Even if uh, you don't understand what is going on sometimes, just copy the formula, you know, just write a couple different things and then hopefully it'll come to you. Okay? Just keep it flowing. So f of t is equal to x and x is equal to this. So I, I can go ahead and replace x with that. That's going to give me f of, oh, come on, Desmos, don't make it a straight line f of t equals 1 over square root of t squared minus 2t. Okay, so that's my f of t, but remember I was saying that I'm trying to get an expression for f of x. So I want this to be in terms of x, but guess what? Forget about the old x, that x is gone, okay? There was a joke about it, like, um, anyways, <laughs> this is probably not a good time. Uh, but this is f of t, so... I, I want an expression in terms of x, so let's go ahead and replace t with x. I know some people are questioning, like, you replace x with something in terms of t, and then how come you do that? That's not the same x anymore. x is disposable, you know? You can use it and reuse it. So now replace t with x, and you'll get the expression, the function in terms of x, as a function of x, because you can replace a variable with another variable, okay? As long as you stay within the domain, and I think we do. So that's going to be my answer, and the other one is going to have a negative sign in front of it. Are they both valid? You can check it out. Well, checking will be a little painful, but you can absolutely do that. So this brings us to the end of the first method. Did I say that I was going to present two methods? I think so. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. The second method may be incomplete because I'm not exactly sure where this is going to lead, but at least I'll give you uh, a point, like hopefully some hints to work with. And then you're going to let me know how this goes. Okay, so we have this equals x. My second method also uses substitution. I think I already mentioned that. But it's a different substitution. It is the trigonometric substitution. Why? Because the presence of 1 plus x squared. Now when we do integrals like this, or something that looks like that, or something that contains it, we usually replace x with tangent theta. The coefficient here is 1 because uh, it's added to 1 squared. Make sense? Hopefully it does. And this is going to solve the problem right, real quick. Uh, does that work nicely with this functional equation? We'll see. Oh, there's also another discussion we can have about, what is that called? Hyperbolic functions, but we'll, we'll probably do it later. Anyways, replace x with tangent theta and see what happens. From here we get the following. f of tangent theta plus the square root of 1 plus tangent squared theta. Aha. Uh -huh. I know what that equals, divided by tangent theta equals tangent theta. So everything is trigonometric. Now 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared, and the square root of secant squared can be written as secant or negative secant. This is probably why I get two solutions from here, and this is what I get. And from here, can I simplify this expression here and turn it into something nice? Yeah, I guess but that's probably going to be a little painful. If you have any ideas, please let me know, because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.